Under Sylvia Pankhurst's leadership, several branches of the WSPU in East London developed into a semi-autonomous federation. Sylvia rejected the arson campaign and her sister Christabel's increasingly anti-male rhetoric. Sylvia was also more preoccupied with the lives of working class women, and like many working class members, became concerned by the increasing focus of her sister and mother on recruiting wealthy supporters. Working class members began to report feeling uncomfortable when visiting WSPU headquarters, with some referring to the organization as the Society Women's Political Union. The feeling of alienation seems to be reciprocal, with Sylvia recalling Christabel saying that a working women's movement was of no value. Working women were the weakest portion of the sex. Their lives were too hard, their education too meager to equip them for the contest. Summoned to Paris in January 1914, Christabel informed Sylvia she and the branches she led were to be expelled from the WSPU. You have your own ideas, Christabel stated. We do not want that. We want all our women to take their instruction and walk in step like an army. In January 1914, the East London Federation formally became an independent society with a democratic structure, calling for universal adult suffrage, not just votes for women, on the same limited terms as men. The struggle for the vote was just one aspect in the Federation's fight for equality. They also tackled issues of pay and working conditions. The Federation's strategy was to combine large-scale demonstrations with public acts of militancy, such as window smashing, that resulted in immediate arrests rather than secret acts of arson. Sylvia, like her mother, was also arrested, went on hunger strike and force-fed. At the outbreak of war, many factories in the East End closed, damaging the local economy. In response, the Federation distributed milk and opened a series of canteens and volunteer-run children's health clinics. Merging with the Men's Political Union, the organization became the Workers' Suffrage Federation, continued to campaign for universal suffrage, and opened branches outside London. After votes for largely middle-class women had been won, the federation changed its name again to become the Workers' Socialist Federation. 